Okay, hello everybody. All right, let's do some videos here. <clears throat> I've been feeling a little um, out of it for a few days uh, due to major, major changes, but I'm feeling better, so let's see if I can get some of these whipped out. Okay, let's put uh, the Wayback Machine back, 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 all the way back to after I left uh, G-Man's house and then went to um, Washington, D.C. and spent some time with Jonathan. Then I went up north to see Jeannie and meet up with Sandy. Okay, then um, we spent some time together, the three of us, and I was going to work on buying a bus and uh, building the bus up north but that didn't pan out, so we decided to come on back to Texas, given the time of year, it was the perfect time of year, to uh, build out the bus, as te Texas is very temperate in the wintertime. So that's what we opted to do. So Sandy and I, each in our um, separate vehicles, started driving back to Texas. Now, one of the major stops that we were going to do was Mammoth Caves. I've wanted to see Mammoth Caves for, oh, as long as I can remember. So we headed that direction, ended up having some major, uh, Lily had some major car trouble that just drug on and on and on. Well, eventually what ended up happening is uh, Stephanie and her dad came and got Lily and me and we went directly back to Texas, and Sandy went down to Mammoth Caves on her own. And then we, he, she met us, and uh, she drove out to Texas later. Now, the important part here, and the reason why I'm doing this video, is that as many times as you want to do something, if it isn't meant to be, or if your vibration doesn't match, you cannot do it until those vibrations do match. Well, after um, Sandy ended up coming to Texas and meeting us up, after the fact, after she had been to Mammoth Cave, I could read Mammoth Cave through her. And what the story ended up being was there was no way that I could have ever gone to Mammoth Cave at that point in time. Because the vibration of Mammoth Cave at that time was way, way, way too low for me. Now, Sandy is very, very much a nature woman. So she was able to connect with Mammoth Cave and the surrounding area via nature. So she was able to get to Mammoth Cave and go down in there, I think, two or three times. She even felt very, very out of whack there. But she kept thinking it was her and not the place itself, so she kept trying. She did some kayaking. She had a wonderful time, but she had a difficult time in Mammoth Cave. When she came to Texas, I was able to read Mammoth Cave and found out through reading Mammoth Cave through her, with there being a buffer, so to speak, that a lot of really, really bad things happened in Mammoth Cave. I mean, a lot of really bad things. Now, I don't know anything about Mammoth Cave. I know very little about history of anything, period. Uh, mainly because I don't trust people to write it accurately, so what's the point? But what I can do is I can see the way things are. I can go back in time, so to speak. Kind of third person isk. And what I found was that... Um, a lot of death, destruction, a lot of slavery, a lot of torture, a lot of really bad things happened in that cave system. Now, while Sandy was there, she picked up a book and ended up reading that book and come to find out, of course, I didn't know anything about this before I met back up with her again. But I did tell her what I saw and that matched the book that she had read and then some. So basically, I never made it to Mammoth Cave, came back to Texas, and was pretty worn out. Pretty, pretty worn out. 
So both of us were pretty worn out, so we spent a lot of time just sitting and recuperating at that point. But the point on this um, video that I want to tell you all is that um, that even though I wanted to go to Mammoth Cave and the human in me wanted to go experience um, that magnificent cave system, when it came time for me in physical body to go to Mammoth Cave, it was not possible for me to do so because my vibration was not within range of that um, cave system at that time. Now, since then, a lot of the vibration on the planet has changed, and I will be able to go back and see Mammoth Cave another time. But at that particular time, we were not a match, and it could not have happened. Now, the smartest thing for me to do was to figure out that something was wrong with my itinerary, and that is the reason why the car kept breaking down, because... It would get fixed, and then it would break, and it would get fixed, and then it would break. And I'd head towards Mammoth, and it would break. Head down, I never got 30 miles, because the same thing kept occurring over and over again. And this went on for like two and a half weeks, is how stubborn I am. So instead of stopping and looking at the circumstance and saying, Okay, something's wrong here. What am I doing wrong? What am I not listening to? What am I not paying attention to? What I did was it was insistent that I was going to meet Sandy at Mammoth Caves and go see Mammoth Caves because I've always wanted to do that, period. And what my vibration was saying was, you can't do that. The vibration does not match. You cannot do that. So I kept trying and the car kept breaking to the point where we never did get it fixed until... They had headed their way to come get me, and then magically, of course, my ch plans changed, my decisions changed. I was going to Texas, and within 24 hours, the car was fixed. You see. So the trick here in learning how to do this is to figure out where you're, where you're misaligned. And you've heard people say this, go with the flow. Abraham Hicks does that. Says go with the flow. Um, whatever is the gentlest is the right way. Of course, society and Christianity has said, no, 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 no. You've got to struggle. But what I'm saying is that is not accurate. Of course, that is accurate for the game of contrast for humans to play. But in getting back to 5D... The best, easiest way is the only way to, for us to do what we're doing. And if we don't follow the flow and the ease with it, then we will run into problems that will force us to go the way we need to go. So we can do it either the easy way or we can do it the hard way. This, again, was another example of me doing it the hard way. Hopefully to give you an example so that you will flow and figure those things out before you do it the hard way, like I tend to do over and over again. Okay? All right, that's it on Mammoth Springs. Uh, that's it, and I'll talk to you guys again later. Huge hugs. Love you so much. Bye now. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about... Um, Sandy and I going to see an Abraham Hicks uh, workshop in San Antonio. And I guess we were here for a few weeks, back in Texas a few weeks, when uh, somehow that came up. And we, we decided to go and, and see Abraham Hicks. We will be traveling around a lot, and I've wanted to see Abraham Hicks for quite a while. Now... Part of the reason why I want to see Abraham Hicks is I, one of the few things I've not been able to do is locate Abraham, which if you know anything about Abraham Hicks or Esther Hicks, then Abraham is a group of entities. It's not a, an entity, it's a group of entities. And for whatever the reason, I haven't been able to find Abraham while listening, and usually I can go find just about anyone at any time. 
and I haven't been able to find him. And during a very difficult time in my life, Abraham Hicks's books kind of pulled me out of a funk and got me over uh, that desire of wanting to die again after I came back from being dead and kind of got me so that I would try living again. And that and Akira, my puppy dog, got me through that period of time. And I always wanted to go see Esther in person just to see if I can pick up a read on that. So we drove to San Antonio and went to the workshop. Showed up there right off the, right at the beginning and the people, you know, it's it's just like they show it on, the, on YouTube. Looks just like that. About the same number of people there as what you would see in the YouTube videos. All with a whole bunch of people raising their hands. If anybody's ever been to an Amway meeting, it felt kind of like that. Uh, the people that were there, um, I'll go into that in a minute. But first thing, that uh, Esther came out and, like I said, looked just like uh, the YouTube videos. She came out, and I have to say that I was very surprised. Because, uh, and explained why I couldn't find anybody, is because I kind of assumed that Esther was a starseed, and she is not. She is a long-term human. <laughs> I guess I should have known that, because she's all very happy to be here, and enjoys life here, so that should have been my, my, uh, uh, hint right off the bat, but I never got that far, but in person it was very easy to read her. Also, her husband, who wrote a lot of the books with her over the years, who has since passed away, he was the star seed. Um, he also was there with her, um, you know, dead him, of course. And also, when Esther came out, I could read her easily, I could find her husband, and whenever she went into her trance state, I immediately found Abraham, which was surprising because uh, they were not where I thought they would be uh, at all. Uh, Abraham is definitely in the fourth dimension. They are very, very, very high, almost at 5D, but still, nonetheless, they are on this side of 4D, uh, on, of that breaking point. My version of 5D, that is. Okay? So, also, what I found interesting was that whole place was full of long-term humans. I expected there to be at least a percentage of star seeds, and I guess there was, because Sandy and I were both there. But, for the most part, except for Sandy, me, and one other woman, all the rest of the people at the workshop that we were at were all long-term humans. And they were all very much wanting very similar things. Just pretty much how you see it on YouTube. They were interested in money, careers, love of their life, um, you know, that kind of thing. You know, it's always the same things they're asking for over and over again. So, I guess I should have figured it out then, too, because a uh, star seed rarely asks for those things. Uh, usually a star seed is looking for peace, oneness, home, um, you know, that kind of thing. And this place was just full of long-term humans. So needless to say, I wasn't very interested in talking with them in between the breaks. However, there was one woman who was sitting next to us who was a starseed. And the interesting thing was that during one of the breaks I got to visiting with her, see if I could start up a conversation. And the workshop that we were in was actually her seventh workshop, workshop that she had been to. And she told me that she had, was really surprised because she never found anyone that she could relate to, that she could really hit it off with. Of course, I knew why. She didn't hit off with hit it off with anybody, and that's because she was a star seed. All the rest of them were long term humans. Okay, so I wanted her to get comfortable with me, and we did. We had a nice visit, 
and then it was the end of the break and uh, we went into the final session. I had a couple short conversations with her, then a longer one, and then we went into the last session. At the end of the last session, I looked up and actually was watching her get up her stuff, and I grabbed my stuff, and I followed her out, and this woman was literally, I mean, she was doing everything but sprinting out the door. And I was training my darndest to catch up with her. But she didn't look to the right, to the left, not up, not down, nothing. And it was so busy, it was so loud, I couldn't call out to her. And I had neglected to ask her her name. So I couldn't get her attention. So I watched her walk away from me as fast as she could, wanting to get out of there as quickly as she could, because she was uncomfortable, of course. And really... The person that could have explained why she was struggling so much at those workshops was standing right behind her. Of course, we are all creative gods. We all know what we're doing. So because of that, I finally stopped and just watched her leave, a walk over into her, get in her car and drive away. But I remember thinking how interesting that was, that seven times she'd been looking for somebody to connect to, and there were actually two people she could have connected to quite well, but she had had it in her mind so seriously that she couldn't find anybody that, again, the law of attraction works and she didn't find anybody. So, yeah, that's the interesting thing about Abraham Hicks' workshop. So that's it on that one. Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you so much. Huge hugs now.